Well, welcome, everybody. Good morning. For, well, I guess good morning for everybody who's in the United States. Uh, there are some that are international. It might be afternoon by then. But it is certainly a pleasure to be here today for the United for Infrastructure Week uh, presentation that the AGA is sponsoring and, and American Iron and Steel Institute and the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance. The title of this one is Accelerated Bridge Construction Showcase. And what I mean by that showcase is this is supposed to be fun. Um, and hopefully we will have some fun today because we know that bridge designers, fabricators, erectors, and contractors have always been innovative in delivering bridge projects for owners. Today, we're going to look at a showcase of bridge case studies that bridge manufacturing firms can design, fabricate, and deliver to the bridge site to demonstrate the merit of different types of manufactured steel bridge solutions. Bridge manufacturing firms use experience and economies of scale to produce high quality, beautiful, functional, and economical bridges for owners across the country. We will also look at some case studies where traditional fabricators prefabricate modular bridges for accelerated bridge construction. And we're even going to look at a case where a contractor applies construction techniques to install a very large bridge with ABC. Accelerated bridge construction has become an important part of the bridge industry in that it reduces on-site construction time and, of course, inconvenience to the public. So I, I would call today's presentation, hey, let's look at some really cool steel bridge projects. It is meant to be a fun showcase of bridges from our steel bridge fabricators and the manufacturing industry. Some of what we will see will come across as marketing as we mention names of the fabricators and manufacturers and their products and view some of the videos. And admittedly, it probably is marketing for them. But we're going to look at these showcase studies as options for the owner or the engineer when considering what bridge could be selected to meet a bridge need. And if by this they get some business, good for them, because they really do have some great bridge products. So we're going to start by talking about accelerated bridge construction. From the Federal Highway Administration ABC website, approximately one-fourth of the nation's over 600,000 bridges require rehabilitation, repair, or total replacement. However, the work that occurs from on-site construction activities can have significant social impacts to mobility and safety. In many cases, the direct and indirect costs of traffic detours that result from the loss of a bridge during construction can exceed the actual cost of the structure itself. Because of the potential economic and safety impacts, minimizing traffic disruptions is a goal that should be elevated to a higher priority when planning bridge-related construction projects. So accelerated bridge construction is bridge construction that uses innovative planning, design, materials, and construction methods in a safe and cost-effective manner to reduce the on-site construction time that occurs when building new bridges or replacing and rehabilitating existing bridges. <clears throat> the case studies we will discuss are from traditional fabricators and bridge manufacturing firms that are members of the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance. These firms design, fabricate, and deliver many styles of steel bridges, and this is just a sample of the varieties that they produce. And of course, you may get more information about any of these firms through, well, of course, an internet search or from the Alliance website, shortspansteelbridges.org. So John kind of stole a little of my thunder, but the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance is a group of bridge and buried steel soil structure industry leaders who have joined together to provide educational information on the design and construction of short span steel bridges and installations up to 140 feet. And today, the fabricators and manufacturing firms are one type of member from the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance group of stakeholders. The Alliance is involved in all aspects of Simple Span Steel Bridge design and construction, including outreach and education, resources on all aspects of steel bridges, sample case studies, 
The simple design tool, eSpan 140, which allows you to get a design for a steel bridge in just a matter of minutes. The technology center for owner and engineer questions. And then, of course, the prefabricated bridge manufacturer solutions from the Alliance members and innovative and ABC bridge solutions to meet bridge needs. Today's webinar is a showcase of prefabricated bridges from the Alliance fabricators and manufacturing firms. But I do want to mention one additional thing. One thing we do is workshops, and we have had great workshops in the past. Uh, we have kind of standard, they can be modified, kind of standard workshops, four-hour workshops, six-hour workshops that we deliver free of charge to the hosting agency. And we have a couple of New Jersey people on the line. We did one right before COVID in New Jersey. That was a huge success where we co-sponsored the workshop with the, the New Jersey ACEC and the New Jersey DOT. And if you're interested in a workshop, www.shortspansteelbridges.org slash education. And we are interested in talking with you. So when we talk about manufacturer bridge firms in the context of this presentation, prefabricated bridges are structures that are designed and fabrica fabricated by these manufacturing firms and delivered to the site ready for erection. Some people call them pre-engineered bridges, but that is not entirely true since each bridge is individually designed and fabricated for the particular site and load characteristics. The bridge is built into components or modules and assemblies in a quality controlled shop shipped to the bridge site and erected. This results in time savings for construction, cost savings, increased site safety, and the pieces will fit together well because of the quality shop fabrication. However, another way to think of manufactured bridges is that they are a bridge in a box in that the manufacturer has worked out all the design and, and details, sent it to the site, and the owner gets an aesthetically pleasing bridge without having the inconvenience of going through a typical design bid build process. Now for the showcase of manufacturing firm bridges with some traditionally fabricated accelerated bridge construction bridges. We will start with a bouquet street bridge. Now, I don't know if I'm saying that word right, but that's the way I'm going to say it. The bouquet street bridge in Gibson, Louisiana, that replaced a five span concrete deck bridge supported on piles that was constructed in 1962. The prefabricated panel beam bridge replacement was 90 foot long with two 12 foot travel lanes. Acro, out of Persephone, New Jersey, fabricates standard six foot wide panels that are placed side by side for variable width bridges. For the Bouquet Street Bridge, the panels were shipped to the site and gray contracting erected this bridge. The standard bridges are fabricated for quick installation with minimal labor and no field welding, cutting, or, or field fabrication. The bridge modules are fabricated with pairs of girders, here with a steel orthotropic deck that had a factory applied epoxy aggregate non-skid surface. All of the steel was galvanized for long-term protection. The modules were shipped to the site and set on the supports and the orthotropic decks were simply bolted together for quick installation and no concrete concrete curing time. And then the guardrails were bolted to the exterior girder. The Acro prefabricated panel bridges provide a simple design, quick installation, a long lasting life expectancy while meeting and exceeding ASHTO load and design requirements. The Bouquet Street Bridge shown here used an orthotropic deck and steel guardrails. But the standard panel design can also use timber decking or a cast in place concrete deck and jersey type barriers. Prefabricated modules are built in the shop, shipped to the site, and simply connect together for a good looking quality bridge. A simple concept combined with quality fabrication and practical erection planning, resulting in a great ABC bridge product. Now, this one is a traditionally fabricated rolled beam modular bridge built as a bridge replacement project for State Road 30 near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The contractor was Brayman Construction out of Saxonburg, Pennsylvania, 
and the modular units were fabricated by Quality Bridge and Fab out of West Middlesex, Pennsylvania. And then the precast deck was cast onto the modular units by Brayman Precast. The project included demolition of the old structure, replacing the ab <coughs> abutment stems and approach slabs, and constructing the superstructure with the modular units. This single span structure was replaced using accelerated bridge construction methods. Working 12 hour shifts, the old structure was removed and the new one installed in 57 hours. The road was closed Friday after rush hour and open Monday morning before that rush hour. The beam sizes shown here are 30 by 99, 54 foot long, with simple channel cross frame diaphragms. The modular pairs were assembled and the deck was cast during fabrication. Then the modules were shipped to the site and set. And then the ult an ultra high performance concrete was used to for the closure pores between the modules. Now I'm gonna show several videos during this presentation. This one actually does not have sound, but when it has sound, I'm gonna have to put my microphone next to my sound bar since uh, the AGA system will not let me transfer the sound through there, but this one does not. But this video shows a great accelerated bridge construction project. Now I'll kind of talk through it a little bit as we go through it. So there's the bridge and they're starting to, to unstitch that bridge and get it ready to tear it down. They're working on the approaches, all that kind of stuff. And now the bridge comes down, they're getting the old bridge out of the way and you can see the, the abutment stems need some work. So they're repairing those while they're working on the approaches. And pretty soon they're gonna be ready to start setting these modules. And a big hydraulic crane comes in and picks one up and literally just sets it on the supports. Now they bring in a, a larger crane and I wish they would have moved this hydraulic crane so we could see a little better, but they're working and they're putting those in and they're starting to put that ultra high performance, performance concrete uh, closure pores between the modules and they just keep bringing in these modules. Now they're going to start working on those approaches. And now there are all the, all the modules are set for the bridge. So now they're doing those closure pours and getting that ready, setting the, getting the approaches. And now it's open up for traffic. They clean up and that is a completed bridge. With minimal disruption to traffic, the old bridge was removed and the new bridge was ready for traffic in 57 hours. That's a good looking bridge done in a quick amount of time. So a fairly new concept for multi-bridge replacement plans is using public-private partnerships and bridge bundling programs. Recently, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation Rapid Bridge Replacement Project involved the design, construction, and maintenance of nearly 600 bridges. The folded steel plate girder systems from CDR Bridge Systems out of Pittsburgh was used on seven of the accelerated bridge construction projects. In each case with the folded steel plate girder, construction was completed with closures of only 30 to 35 days. This example, the JV70 bridge is one of those that was constructed by Walsh Construction. The modular system installed with ABC saved time and inconvenience to the public. The units are fabricated in the controlled conditions of the shop, pre-topped with a concrete deck here from AC Miller, shipped to the site and placed on the abutments. Folded steel plate girder bridges utilize cold bent steel plates to form an innovative girder shape that provides strength with lighter weight. Concrete deck panels are precast and attached to the girders to form composite units that can be shipped and erected easily and quickly. Instead of a more expensive ultra high performance concrete deck joint like we saw in the last one, a simpler and wider high strength concrete closure port connects the deck panels to complete the superstructure system. The erection of the two lane bridges with four folded steel plate girder units was completed in one half of a work shift on all seven of the bridges furnished by CDR for the PennDOT bundled project. Now, this video, you're gonna, this is a marketing video, okay? But it does show the folded plate system 
and the ease of erection. So I did put my microphone by my soundbar there so you could hear the music, but there are some later ones that have some talking in them, and so I will continue to do that. And yes, you've just been marketed by CDR, but it is a great product, and it is pretty interesting. So <clears throat> this is another similar type modular system. The short span steel bridge alliance developed a new concept called the press brake tub girder for an economical steel bridge design that meets the needs for accelerated bridge construction. The idea of tub girders has been around for a long time, but, but, but they are usually for larger structures with tub flanges and webs that are cut from plate and welded together. The general idea of the press brake tub is that a standard width plate is bent into a tub shape, maximizing its performance with no waste of steel material and no welding. The tub can be pre-topped with a concrete deck and the module shipped to the site and assembled with ultra-high performance concrete closure pours. However, this press brake tub girder bridge replacement project in Muskegon County, Ohio, was a little different. The bridge is special because the tubs were composite with a steel sandwich plate deck system that is only two inches thick. The result is a low-profile bridge that did not require extensive approach work, even though they were increasing the hydraulic opening for the crossing. The tubs were bent in a press brake by Mako out of Ellsworth, Kansas, and fabricated by U.S. Bridge out of Canton, Ohio, with a sandwich plate from SPS North America out of Banks, Oregon. The steel was galvanized and metallized for long performance by AZZ Galvanizing. So the girders are bent in a press brake and hot dip galvanized. The sandwich plate is only about two inches thick, made from steel plates sandwiching a polyurethane elastomer core. Those sandwich plates are attached to the bridge girders, and the units are then shipped to the site. So this video shows just how easy the bridge was to install on the abutments. Okay, 
quite an interesting video. So the bridge was erected from one side due to the light weight of the modules in only 20 minutes. There was excellent match fit and dimensional accuracy due to the shop fabrication and the sandwich plate quality. There was no concrete, so no curing time, and the bridge had immediate load carrying capacity. And the locals appreciated the 30-day road closure with the ABC modular bridge. Next, we're going to look at a prefabricated modular beam bridge a common erection technique from our bridge manufacturing firms. Two beam elements are fabricated in the controlled conditions of a shop, shipped to the site, placed on the abutments, and connected together. This project is located in southern Indiana outside of the town of Borden. The existing bridge was a narrow, deteriorating, two-span bridge with a total structure length of 35 feet. A 36 foot 8 inch simple span prefabricated modular rolled girder superstructure was selected for the replacement, which of course meant that they were able to remove that center pier. The bridge modules were prefabricated by Contact Engineered Solutions out of Westchester, Ohio, and the contractor was Civilcon. The new bridge was built with three modular sections that were shipped on one truck to the site. The modular sections consisted of two weathering steel rolled beams with a pre-attached corrugated metal deck. Simple bolted diaphragms connected the beam pair modules after they were set on the abutments. The concrete deck was cast in place and, the gal and a galvanized steel railing finished the bridge. So here's a video that shows the erection of that bridge. Kind of reminds me of Tinker Toys and, and blocks when I played with as a kid, which of course is the reason that I became an engineer. So the superstructure package was designed and built so that the local county bridge crew could install the bridge. Within six hours of delivery, the superstructure modules were installed and ready for deck reinforcement and concrete. For our next case study, this corrugated steel plate buried steel bridge was built on Route 2B in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. The bridge was fabricated and designed by Big R Bridge, now part of Contec, out of Greeley, Colorado, and built by GP, J.P. Sicard. The bridge is located on a steep, narrow site on a curb with residents living nearby. With poor soils on the site, the designer needed a system that could accommodate significant differential settlement. The contractor had a maximum 50-day closure of the roadway, but earned a monetary incentive when it was reopened after only 45 days. The ABC project used precast concrete foundation blocks and, a, and precast wall panels to significantly shorten the construction time with no concrete curing times. The corrugated structural plates are shipped to the site and bolted together to make arches. Light equipment can be used to lift those arches into place, and when they're connected together, it becomes a stable structure. And then the bridge arch is covered with soil and the roadway built. A buried steel bridge is lighter weight, 
flexible, and able to handle anticipated settlement better than conventional bridges. With the lightweight structure, they were also able to use those precast footings. Because of the arch, shorter spans are required to achieve vertical clearance requirements. And there is a continuous roadway surface with no bridge deck or joints to maintain. Plus, and this is a personal opinion, I believe they are just very beautiful bridges. Okay, so now here's another example of a modular road beam bridge, but this time for a rural road. The existing Swamp Creek Bridge located in Sweetgrass County, Montana, suffered from high water events and scour, scouring issues. Eight foot wide by 65 foot long twin beam modules were fabricated by True North Steel out of West Fargo, North Dakota, and the bridge was constructed by the local county crew. The modules had a pre-installed guardrail and corrugated metal deck for a gravel roadway. This bridge also used accelerated bridge construction abutments. True North's prefabricated steel box super sill abutments, an NABC abutment, were shipped to the site and installed prior to delivery of the bridge modules. Starting in the morning, the local crew and a crane set the three 8 by 65 foot bridge modules by lunchtime that same day. And this video shows the construction of the Sweetgrass Bridge. Swamp Creek Bridge for Sweetgrass County. It's a 24 foot wide by 65 foot span, pre-engineered modular steel bridge designed and fabricated by Trinity Steel. This particular job utilized the super sill abutment system, which is a steel box form that consists of structural elements once set and installed, um, it's filled with concrete. The super sill abutment is typically utilized in situations where the soils are conducive for a perch style abutment with a spread footing. Modular steel bridges are simple to install based on showing up in component form and simply bolting adjacent modules together to achieve your width and length and utilize a steel back wall to protect each end of the bridge and provides a decent place to build your road approaches. Turnover steel modular bridges seamlessly tie together the most important aspects of bridges, including aesthetics, cost, and installation time. Our durable prefabricated high quality modular designs are low cost and can be AASHTO state and local bridge design requirements. We ship them prefabricated directly to the projects so they easily can be assembled and installed by contractors or county crews resulting in minimal road closure time. Okay. True North Bridge Package was selected based on economics and the simplicity of the prefabricated modular design that could be placed on the abutments and simply bolted together. With the gravel riding surface on the corrugated steel deck, the bridge was open to traffic within a day and a half from when the first prefabricated bridge module was set. Now, several of the manufacturing firms have standardized truss designs that they prefabricate, package, and deliver to a bridge site. After Hurricane Maria, uh, Maria in Puerto Rico, many crucial bridges were washed away and whole communities were isolated from civilization. U.S. Bridge has several standard prefabricated bridge designs that they shipped, and they shipped five of their Liberty Bridges over a six-week period, amounting to 800 metric tons of steel for over 950 foot of bridge length. This bridge is the Morovis Liberty Bridge, engineered and fabricated by U.S. Bridge and erected by the Del Val Group. The Liberty Bridge can be shipped as modules in containers, quickly assembled and erected and can also be used as a quality permanent bridge as they were in Puerto Rico. 
This particular bridge out of the five cent was 24 foot wide, three span continuous truss with spans of 106 feet, 98 feet, and 106 feet, weighing 318 tons and shipped in 17 containers. The steel was galvanized for longevity and low maintenance. This video, it's a fairly short video, but this video shows them just literally picking up trusses and setting them on the supports. Just pick up the whole bridge and set her there. The truss parts and modules were shipped in containers to the site, sub-assemblies bolted together and lifted into place, and then of course the riding surface installed. The Morovis Liberty Bridge was constructed in 18 days. All five of the U.S. bridges sent to Puerto Rico were completed in six weeks. A local resident stated what helped us the most was the construction of the metal bridge. Our manufacturing firms, with their innovative prefabricated bridge systems, can meet any bridge need and deliver bridge projects for owners. So here is one more modular rolled beam bridge, one, one that is a little larger in size than the others we have seen. Many of the manufacturers produce standard modular bridges, and, and these bridges are being built all across the country due to economy, quality, and ease and speed of construction. The Severe River Bridge, located near Axtell, Utah, is a critical thoroughfare for the numerous farmers and ranchers in central Utah. The existing 1935 built bridge was structurally and functionally deficient and could no longer handle the load safely. The new 75 foot long bridge was built with modular rolled beams units using accelerated bridge construction techniques. The bridge module modules were designed and fabricated by Wheeler Bridge out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and the contractor was Gerber Construction. The new bridge was designed with four longitudinal weathering steel beams. The beams were prefabricated in the modular pairs at Wheeler and shipped to the site for quick erection. Simple bolted diaphragms connected the beam pairs after they were set on the abutments. The concrete deck was cast in place and a crash tested prefabricated steel railing finished the bridge. And this video with some discussion uh, shows the erection of the modular steel units. While it was on here on strapping, we made sure our abutments were cleaned off, ready to go. Uh, we had laid them out to make sure that we knew where the beams were gonna sit picked it off, set it down on the ground to get our safety horizontal lifeline on there so we wouldn't have to get out on the beam. We got that in place, picked it up, swung it over. We set it into place where the beams were supposed to be. And we'll start getting these diaphragms. There's four diaphragm beams that we need to uh, bolt onto the first sets of beams. Uh, we'll get those bolted into place. Then we will pick up the second set of beams and move it over towards the first set of beams to line up with those diaphragms. We'll set it down, mark the anchor holes on this one, then pick it back up, drill those sets of holes, clean those out, and then set it back into place and bolt the diaphragm beams up to the new section of beams. So you can tell my video is a little choppy because I took their eight minute video and and got it down to just a little bit over a minute because we know our attention spans are are uh, less than eight minutes. Oops, tried to show it again. So according to the project engineer, <coughs> quote, we specified prefabricated steel on this project for several reasons. One reason was that 
Steel beams are typically shallower than prefabricated pre-stressed concrete systems, which allowed us to keep a low bridge profile height. The second factor was cost. The prefabricated steel beams were less expensive than comparable prefabricated concrete systems. So this was a larger traditional type rolled beam bridge that was modularized in the design, planning, and erection techniques to meet an accelerated bridge construction need. Our last case study demonstrates using construction techniques to meet accelerated bridge construction needs. The Interstate 44 bridge over the Gasconade River in Missouri is an excellent example of lateral slide construction. The bridge is constructed next to the crossing and literally pushed into place to reduce road closure. The bridge was fabricated by DeLongs out of Jefferson City, Missouri and installed by Emory Sapp and Sons. The composite steel plate girder bridge is 670 foot long with six spans, a very large bridge when you think of simply pushing it into place. Now I could have more pictures, but this video tells the story a lot better than I could with words. I remember the day we pulled up and looked at the job. We, I turned around and I asked Rusty and Chip, I said, you guys up for a challenge. I said, the way to do this project is, is build your existing bridge beside it, roll it in, and, and mitigate this whole river and, and all the flooding we have here. It overwhelmed you at first because it was a, a uh, bridge of considerable length and a bridge of considerable height and, and, and the, the tributaries down there you're working over, it, all that added together would, would give you reason to pause. We've built a lot of bridges, you know, so it wasn't so much erecting the bridge, but, but getting it from point A to point B, you know, that, that you know, and, uh, and being it's never been done in Missouri before, and I, I don't know how many times it's actually been a period, but uh, supposedly this was the largest bridge that's ever been slid. So we had Teflon bearing pads, a stainless steel plate that went from the temporary vent all the way across to the permanent vent. We used uh, soap as a lubricant to actually allow the Teflon to slide on top of the stainless steel. And then on each pier, we had a, a hydraulic ram. There were seven locations. Each, each one was synchronized to a central unit that actually controlled the hydraulics. It would push the bridge about a two foot, I think, and then the ram would actually pull itself forward and then it would fall into two locking keys and then push against it and, and it would continue that process until it got it into its final position 40 feet away. Uh, at the end of the day, when we actually got it in final position, uh, we had our uh, surveyors out on the project to check at each vent location and center line. We had already previously marked where center line should be. They went out and verified. And when we completed the push, we were, the most we were off was a quarter of an inch. And uh, at least we were, was as close as a thickness of a hair. Once we moved the bridge over and, you know, we knew we still had to tie in the roadway. So, but once that bridge slid over, I mean, uh, the, the feeling was, uh, it, you know, it was, it was pretty special. All the risk that was associated with the project actually came true. We were able to show that we eliminated the risk and still completed the project on time with several delays involved in the process and still were able to hit the target date that no got set output. So there was a 20 day bridge closure compared to a well over two month closure required for traditional construction methods. This was a 2,050 ton bridge slide that took 10 hours. An amazing feat of engineering. So to summarize, uh, we know that bridge designers, fabricators, erectors, and contractors have always been innovative in delivering those bridge projects for owners. Bridge manufacturing firms can deliver high quality, beautiful bridges that are economical due to economies of scale and efficient repeated fabrication practices. And of course, traditional fabricators can produce prefabricated elements for accelerated bridge construction. Owners and design engineers can find more information on these prefabricated and manufactured fabricated bridges on the Shortspan Steel Bridge website, shortspansteelbridges.org, 
If you need a bridge, these firms can design, fabricate, and deliver a bridge that meets your needs. The Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance and its members is ready to work with local engineers and authorities to see if steel bridges meet your bridge rehabilitation and replacement needs. You can contact the Alliance through the website and social media. I thank you for attending this presentation during the United for Infrastructure Week. 